In Creo Parametric, you can customize model check. In this video, we will take a look at customizing the checks file. Here I am in Creo. Let me get rid of the embedded browser. To access the model check settings, I can go to File, Options, and then Environment. Here we have the button for model check settings, and we have the model check configuration tool. Be aware you could do all this manually in text files, but that's a lot harder than using the configuration tool. In the previous video, we took a look at editing the initializations files. So you have your different folders and how you want model check to operate throughout here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the check files and I'm going to modify the default checks file. Be aware that you have one for simple checks. There's also one for strict checks or you could create your own new file. I'm going to expand the conditional settings just to mention the condition files. If you want to set up different conditions to specify which check file is going to be used. So for example, if I go to condition.mcc, we see that we have a couple different conditions here. So for example, if the model unit is in inches, use these different files for the check file, the start file, the constant file, and the status file. If you have a model in millimeters, well, there's a different constants file. You can also set up something called the setconf.mcc and give them different names and set up the different conditions that you want to be evaluated to determine which conditions file that you want to use. We're not going into that in this video. I just want to mention that you have these different conditions that determine which of the check files are used as well as the start file or the constant file or the status file. And for the status file, that just basically determines what's going to end up giving you a green light or a yellow light or a red status light when you run model check and get your report. But let's go to defaultchecks.mch and talk about some of these different settings here. And beware up the top, you've got a drop down list that allows you to go to a specific check if you know what it is named. You can also use the filter to go to checks just for parts, assemblies, or drawings. VDA, I don't even know what that is. All right, so let's talk about some of these different checks. Hey, I'll be honest, I don't know strictly what every single one of these checks do. I'm not gonna go through every single one. I just wanna mention some of the different categories and some that you might want to change. So here we have some for annotation features. Hey, if you care about getting report warnings when you run model check, then you want to change some of these ends to either a Y for yes, so that it runs the check and gives you information, or if you want it to generate an error or a warning, and you have five different modes up here. You can use interactive, which is the most common way of running model check. You could also run model check regenerate when you have a model open. You can also set up for running in batch mode, for operating say in windchill, or you could set it up even to run every time that you save it. And if you're generating different metrics, what checks do you want run? So again, here are some for annotation features. Personally, I don't care about that, so I'm going to collapse it. Next, let's go to components. And so here we have failed components. Well, failed components, right now it's set to N. I actually want that to run, so I'm going to check the box next to it and then in the field for interact i'm going to click on the drop down list and in this particular case i think this should be an error and for fixed components well that's not really bad i would like to be informed about that though so i'm going to change that to a y for yes so i get information about it hey component flexibility yes give me information about how many flexible components that i have in the model me personally, I like to know how many components are assembled with mechanism connections. So I will change this from a no to a yes. And there you can see some of the other different ones in here. 
One that they have is for packaged components. In other words, any component that is not fully constrained. They have that as an error, which I think is a bit overkill. So me personally, I like to change that to a warning. And we've also got suppressed components and unique parts and assemblies. I like that information. I like knowing how many different unique parts I might have in an assembly. All right, let's scroll down. And next up, we have our configuration area. And here, if you have geometry checks, it gives you an error. I think that's a little overkill again. So I like to change that to a warning. Let's collapse that one. Then we have our datums. And you have a whole bunch of different ones for the datums. And the one here that I think is overkill, hey, do you have any datum planes with only one parent? What's so bad about that? Let's change that from an error to no, I really don't care about that. So I'm going to eliminate that as something that is going to be checked. All right, then we have our dependency over here. And so, hey, do we have any children of chamfers? Yeah, I guess that can be an error. I'm okay with it. But then we have a series here that aren't being run. I'm going to check them. Those are for children of external failed components, children of external failed features, children of failed components, and children of failed features. Hey, those are all things that I would like to know about. So I'm going to set all of those to warnings. And so again, you really should go through with your team and decide what you want to check for. And of course, the more things that you have turned on here, the longer it's going to take for model check to run. And let's see anything else in here. Oh yeah, external dependencies. Hey, maybe that's not a warning for me. Maybe I just want some information about it. So I'll change that from a W to a yes, just to give me that information. All right, next up, let's go to the drawing group. And again, there's a ton of different options in here. I will not go through all of them, but here we have unused models, and that gives an error. And eh, I don't think unused models is that big a deal. So I'm going to change that to Y just to get information about it. Then we have a bunch of different options for family tables. Here's one, family tables using default values. Right now, that's a warning. Me personally, I don't care if family table instances have an asterisk indicating that they are using a default value. So I'm going to set that to an N for no. Then we have our features group. Again, let me collapse and let me scroll down a little bit. A lot of different options here for features. And so you can find out, hey, do you have assembly level features? Here it gives us information, buried features, cosmetic features. Let me go down to, let's see, Features with edge references. Here it has an error. I think that's a little bit old school. That's not really that big a deal anymore in my book. So I'm going to change that to a yes. Fail features though, for some reason that's not even being run in here. Let's change that one definitely to an error. And again, you can see that we're getting information. For example, do we have any merge or cutout features? Do we have any regular features? You know, there's a consideration in model check for some features that are considered regular features and that's good for that let's collapse that one then we have our advanced features i don't care about them then a whole bunch of the different options for your geometry checks and a lot of these are used in conjunction with the constants file that you have that you can set up as well but I'm not going to go through any of that stuff. There's a ton of different checks for your geometry checks. Let's go down here to information. And in Creo Parametric 7.0, since they added multi-body modeling, there is now a couple checks for information about bodies that you have in the model. I'm going to check that one. I'm going to change that from no to yes to give me that information. And again, at some point, you should go through and just see what the different options that you have in here are and if you want to use anything different than the defaults. All right, then we have stuff for layers, drawing layers. That generates an error. Again, I think that's overkill. I'll change that to a yes. And then we have, so for example, 
which is the one that I want to change. Oh, layers with uh, datum features on unblanked layers. That's a warning here in this book. I don't care about that, so I'm going to change that to a no. Same with the one below it. Layers with extra items. Who cares? It's just a layer. All right, let's collapse that one. Then we have a few different options for MBD. These were added around Creo 5 or Creo 6 to give you the state of your different annotation elements, if they're in combination states or not. Hey, you might want to change these different settings once you become more of an MBD organization, but you'll notice all of these by default are set to no for all the different modes in which you can run model check. All right, let's see, now we're down to miscellaneous. Hey, do I have any lightweight holes? I might be interested in that because that means that the density calculations or the mass calculations might be incorrect. And another one in here, I mentioned that we have checks now for multi-body, so let's do that one as well. Let's change that to a yes to let me know if the model has multiple bodies and i'm not going to change any of the other ones underneath miscellaneous then we have a bunch for notes i really don't care about any of these then we have a few four different parameters checking the parameters and i do want to mention that some of these checks work in conjunction with the different start files the start files allow you to compare the model that you're analyzing to a default standard part file or assembly file or drawing file and you can check for things like parameters layers and relations and some of these different checks correspond to making sure if your model that you're analyzing has the same stuff in the start file but in this case the only ones that i'm interested in designated attributes Hey, give me information about that. I want to know which parameters are being sent upwards into Windchill. And then there's this one for drawing parameters, which is an error. Again, I don't care about that. I'm just going to change that to a no. And one other one to mention, hey, spelling. You actually have a dictionary that you can set up for checking the spelling of parameters or even model names or or even words in notes to make sure that they are spelled correctly. All right, let's collapse that. And let's see, then we have regeneration related checks. I'm fine with the settings there and also with the ones underneath relations. And here we have rule check. And then we have a few for sheet metal. So sheet metal bend table, that gives an error. Eh, I don't think that people should be dealing with that anyway but I'm going to change that to a yes, just to give me information about it. How about feature bend tables, which I think is a terrible idea, but hey, give me information about that. So I will change that from a no to a yes. Does it have a flat pattern or state? Here it gives an error. Eh, I'm not a big fan of using flat states as their own family table instance, but I just want to be aware of that in the model and also they've got this one over here for unbends if you have unbend bend back features and that might be in a combination i'm not sure but i don't think that should be an error hey let's change that to a no i don't even want to know about it and so then we have the view category over here this pertains to different drawing views and then there's one last category for custom and it's just got one check underneath there i don't even know what this one is but in this way that's how you can go through and set up the different checks that you are going to run and whether you want it to be run want it not to be run want it to generate an error or generate a warning depending on the mode that you are operating in and the most common one is going to be model check interactive so now that i've changed all the different settings that i like i'm going to click the apply button and now in the message area it tells us that we successfully saved the file defaultchecks.mch everything is good in terms of configuring that so i will click ok to close out of the model check configuration tool and we're done
I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.